Hi, I'm back. And so are you. Welcome to episode 70. I feel like every episode I give a little bit more away about my life. But it's okay. One day, not too far away, I will do an episode on vulnerability. And this is all part of it. Being vulnerable and sharing. But that's not what we're talking about today. What I want to share with you is that one of the first things I noticed when I came to the US was how friendly and open people are here. They smiled at me everywhere. At the supermarket, on the trail, at the bagel shop, everywhere. They said hello and how are you? And that was all very new for me. In Germany, people are more inward focused and they're more leery of people they don't know. So this niceness, although often superficial, is something I still very much appreciate about people here. But there was also something else I noticed that was different here. I had many one-on-one conversations where the other person only talked about himself or herself without ever asking me a single question. I have been on first dates like that, or just met people casually that were like that. And still to this date, in my gym, for example, there are people, they just start talking about something they have on their mind. They don't even ask for permission. They just dump stuff on you. Over the years and after asking many close friends here, I found out many possible explanations for this phenomenon. To me, at least, it's a phenomenon. Now, I didn't do any formal research on this, although it might be worth looking into. But one of the main explanations, and one that I also accept, is that people here are more conscious of not getting too personal or prying into other people's lives. And maybe we Germans are nosier or more into people's business. But here I found people are more accepting of everyone's privacy. And asking questions can be considered too personal, especially when first meeting a person. It is also often expected, or so I was told. With the casualty that one person shares her entire life story with a stranger, that the other person does so as well. However, even after all these years, I stand my ground. I believe that we all can become better at asking questions. Asking questions doesn't have to mean that you're invading someone's space. To me, asking questions does two main things. One, it shows interest in the other person. And two, it fosters a valuable skill called empathy. Open and honest interest combined with a degree of empathy can lead to not only a wonderful conversation, but maybe even to a deeper connection. You see, critical conversations take place all day long in our lives. At work, at home, at other places that we frequent. Stores, restaurants, the doctor, even the conversations with yourself, which we have talked about in previous episodes. Unfortunately, the more time we spend with facing electronic devices instead of humans, the less we will use the skill of asking questions. So I think it's worth putting a reminder out there of the amazing power of questions. They can enrich your conversations. They can bring out something vulnerable, something honest, maybe shocking that you never expected. And they can lead to a long-lasting connection with a person. Maybe repair a relationship or end one in a gentle way. Asking questions is not a skill we need to master so we can get someplace else. Maybe your job requires it, but for this episode, I'm not talking about questions to interrogate or lead a person into an answer. I want to encourage you, my listeners, to discover meaning and connection in this world, to cultivate environments of harmony and creativity, and to find truth within yourself and with the beings around you. And for that, we need to ask good questions. So here is my take on questions. Use this advice wherever you go. I even put it together in such a way that you can use it in the order that I'm giving it to you. 
the goal of questions that show interest and empathy is to get to know the other person that you are asking. Even if you think you already know the person. Maybe you've been married for 20 years already. That doesn't eliminate the need for asking questions. Number one, be intentional. To show interest in the other person, you have to be intentional. This means that you are present, that you really want to have this conversation. This means you're not looking at your phone while talking, but you look in the person's eyes. Have you ever spoken to someone who looks at her phone while you're having a conversation? It's a horrible feeling of utter ignorance and unimportance for you as a person. Especially in this time where we're all so strapped for time. Intention means reviewing your body language while you speak. The goal should always be to make the person feel welcome to speak to you. Crossed arms, sunglasses on, and a serious face can make it difficult for the person to open up. So make eye contact. Tune into the facial and body expression of the other person. Intention also shows in the kind of questions you ask. Yes or no questions or lazy questions. I hear many podcast interviewers ask such questions. Lucky for them, they usually have very engaging people they interview who enjoy sharing information and often don't need good questions to get going on a topic. But with those kind of questions, you will often get just incomplete answers with the people that you speak to. Was this transition hard? Sure it was. Hmm, now what? More work on you, because now you have to come up with another question, and you really didn't get much from that person. Questions with would or should, is or are or was this, all lead to yes or no answers. Instead, ask an open-ended question. Those will get you insights and additional information you might not have known existed. Those will get you insights and additional information you might have not known existed. Questions that start with question words, such as who, what, where, when, how, or why, lead to people giving some thought to the answers and you getting a more detailed answer. Number two, and we often forget about number two, has nothing to do with asking at all. It's listen. Truly listen. And that does not mean formulating the next question in your head already while the person is still talking. Just listen, but again, with intention. The intention piece doesn't really go away after you ask your first questions. Maybe things flow a bit easier as you two get talking and connecting well, but you always want to be present. Don't get lazy. As you listen with intention, you listen for detail. What is the person sharing here that is of interest that you could ask more about or that you could be sharing something as well that pertains to the conversation? We don't have enough time on this episode to go into the intricate web of communication, the often tricky play of back and forth in a conversation, who says what and when. But I want to just mention really quickly, sharing your own experience as a response is great. It shows openness, and there's that word again, vulnerability. But don't take hostage of the conversation like I so often see and have encountered. Your focus is on the other person whom you've asked the question. Now, if the person asks you something in return, then you can go in more detail. But try to share only as much as it supports the point that the other person was making. It's really the goal to help the person feel more comfortable. And you can do that with a short story of your own that helps the person ease up. And as you listen for detail, don't interrupt. Hold your questions and be okay with the fact that you might forget them. Just let the person finish and then collect your thoughts. This also means being comfortable with silence. Silence means space. Space for the other person to possibly add something or you to ask another question. Space for you to digest what you heard. Start getting comfortable with this whole flow. Asking a question, waiting for a response, listening to the response, and then waiting some more. There's some silence in between this flow, and it's good. Too often, 
We rush our conversations and we miss out on valuable information someone may want to bring out in that silence. All this, of course, assumes that your conversation is important. And even if you have lost interest because of some of the things the person may have said, I encourage you to show respect. If you can, end the conversation in a respectful way. Or if you cannot, stay with it as long as you must, but continue being a genuine listener and asker. Often, we give up too soon. We judge too quickly, we shut down, we didn't hear what we wanted to hear, so we want to get out. I see this when I go on a date with someone. You can't really get out after five minutes, though. But you can throw your motive out the window and replace it with another one. Maybe the person is not a potential partner, but could be a potential friend, maybe a professional acquaintance, a workout buddy, a potential partner for your friend, and maybe more. See how all these possibilities open up the opportunity to ask more, but maybe different types of questions? And if nothing holds, you are still facing another human being that deserves your respect. So I encourage you, make the best out of every conversation. Don't make your loss of interest obvious to the other person. Instead, try to continue with this last step. It's the toughest part of, of the conversation. Build a bridge. You asked questions. You listened for answers. And now you have some material that tells you more about the person in front of you. Building a bridge means connecting with the person. And that is challenging for many people. You can get by with some interest on the initial two steps. I actually get it a lot. People pick up my accent and, and want to know where I'm from. But as soon as they have their, have their answer, they're done. They either rattle on about their own connection with Germany or they switch topics. Building a bridge is where the empathy portion comes in. When you ask, show that you care. Show it with your body, the tone of your voice, and again with your questions. Like me, I'm sure you have experienced these questions that are just meant to satisfy the other person's superficial level of interest. Where are you from? What part? What brought you here? Oh, nice, thanks, and see you later. I feel so abused and drained after such conversations. I shared something very personal with someone who didn't value it at all. Just enough so he has a good contribution to make at his next dinner. Oh, hey, I met a person from Germany and blah, blah, blah. These are meaningless conversations. A connection was not built. There was some interest, but there was no empathy. Building a bridge takes place when you ask meaningful questions. Meaningful to both of you. Meaningful to the person because he might share something he didn't plan on sharing or has never even thought about it. Meaningful to you because you really get to know the person in a new way and also have a part in it. Even if you never see the person again, you can still do this. These are the conversations that linger, that make us think and reflect on our life, and they make us feel good in a good way. To ask such questions, you need to put yourself in the other person's shoes. That is empathy working. You don't have to understand the situation. You don't have to have experience with it yourself. You just need to try to see it with the other person's eyes. What does it feel to go through something like this, to live like this, and then really imagine it? When you're capable of doing that, then you're also capable of asking deep questions. Tell me more. Explain this to me. How is this possible? What did you feel when you did this? I don't quite understand. Help me, help me see it. Help me feel it. Show humbleness, sincerity, openness to listen. You don't pretend to know everything. You don't finish up the other person's sentence with your thoughts. You let people have the space they need and you stay with it. Let the moments play out and be patient and then inquire some more. These are the excellent follow-up questions you hear experts like Terry Gross or Larry King ask, the ones where you demonstrated your attention to detail, where you connect a detail that was brought up with something else and get even more from the person. Don't accuse, inquire, don't pretend to know, and even if you do, allow the person to tell you. But also challenge yourself and the other person 
push the boundaries a little bit. The process of bridge building is not easy. It takes time and requires a lot of work and energy on your part. It also requires a great deal of good listening. But over time, it can connect you to the other person. It can build rapport and trust. And if you have time to prepare for your conversation, always ask yourself, what questions matter? If you really want to get to know the other person, what do you need to ask? Ask questions to get people to think. Even if you are with an employee having a difficult conversation, use questions to get the person to think about her actions. Don't tell her what you think. It may not resonate with her. And remember that if you want good answers, they come from asking good questions. If you want to get to know someone, ask good questions and display a sense of care, connecting and listening. There you go, my friends, the power of questions. Use it. If you don't know where to go with this next situation, with a person, even with yourself, try it. Ask questions. They are the door that you open to let in new possibility. Much love. Until next time.